Hello, my name is Dr. Fred Kushner. I want to thank ISTA for allowing me to participate in this wonderful meeting. My topic, the talking knee, is the reality, remote patient monitoring for total knee arthroplasty. I'd like to thank my co-authors, Peter Schiller, Jeff Gross, uh, J.P. Mueller, and Bill We all have something to disclose since we're both members of Canary or Zimmer. Since the pandemic of 2020, there's been a marked rise in the use of telemedicine to evaluate patients after arthroplasty. We know that telemedicine is, is to maintain patient contact, but the one limitation is we really don't get much objective total arthroplasty data. You can use external monitoring devices, but they've got mixed results, often due to patient compliance. Patient reported outcome measures, they're limited due to the lack of effectiveness. There's a ceiling effect and often inaccuracies, and there can be a patient reported bias. We know that functional outcomes do not replicate normal activity, and it can't capture activities that are clinically relevant, and they require patients to do tasks in a specific manner that's often burdensome. Wearable technology, we've looked at this with the Fitbit technology, only one third were compliant as outlined, and other studies have shown similar results. So the purpose of our study was to assess a novel stem with an embedded sensor that can support remote patient monitoring of patients following total knee arthroplasty. We use what we call the Cantero system. This was developed by Canary, it functions as a basically a tibial extension attached to the native prosthesis. It's got 3D accelerometers, gyroscopes, which uses telemetry, and a radio system. And we use this to collect kinematic data. And there's a series of three base stations, as I'll show you. Here's the Persona knee device with the Canary extension. We have base station one, which is in the OR. Register information is placed. Here's a home that collects automatically. Then we have a third base station that can be used in the office where we can have the patient do specific maneuvers, squat, go up and down stairs, and monitor their kinematics. It then goes to the uh, physician dashboard where they can look at the daily analytics and look at the, the gait analysis and analyze their patient. Uh, you can also go to the cloud-based, and also patients have a dashboard they can look as well. Now what about the cloud? It's FDA-regulated architecture and function. It's got cybersecurity protocols. It's HIPAA-compliant. And the raw data is used as our metrics for a proprietary algorithm uh, to better evaluate the data. And the patients can either use a cloud-based or an app to see their data. The data is collected in excess of 20 years. The more you monitor, the less long the battery lives. With a simple uh, program that we are planning to use, we may get this up to 20 years. It's pacemaker technology. Uh, we use firmware algorithm as predetermined for when the sampling is going to occur with additional episodes in the office, as I showed you with the handheld device. Predetermined the automated 3D accelerometer and gyroscope IMU data is then converted by the Canary algorithm to well understood gait patterns, and this is a way you can do the re evaluate the patient's uh, gait mobility. This is what it looks like on the right. This table one is what we can collect tibial range of motion with respect to ground, step count, cadence, functional knee range of motion, not just bending with a a quick check on the exam table. The raw data is then processed and uh, can be analyzed. So our study was a cadaveric study, three uh, pelvis to ankle uh, cadavers. It was a Zimmer persona knee with the uh, canary extension. The legs were moved by hand to preset tibial positions with an extension, mid flexion, deep flexion, and then back. The angle of tibia was calculated both with the sensor and the goniometer, a digital goniometer. And the last specimen, we placed one knee cemented, one uncemented to evaluate if we could evaluate any trends in prosthesis fixation. Here's the messes that we used and how it looked. With the uncemented and the compared to the cemented, we did a heel drop and let it fall to the ground, let the heel strike to see if we could uh, detect any differences. And what we found was the sensor data was successful. It transmitted good quality signal and it correlated with the digital goniometer. So the data was reliable and data transmitted. Here's the heel drop. You can see the little marks, and as you look at this slide right here, you can see we could differentiate between a well-cemented and an uncemented prosthesis. So in conclusion, the sensor data was successfully transmitted with good quality um, to the computer. It correlated with range of motion. It was able to go through the cement and through the bone surfaces, and it may be able to detect changes in prosthesis fixation. Here's our commercialization plan. We have an exclusive relationship with Zimmer, not on the knee, but other joints recently. The sales team will introduce it to surgeons and uh, uh, people using the Zimmo Persona knee will be able to add this stem extension. The plan is to sell 4,000 in 2021 and analyze the data using artificial intelligence to gain more information. We're going to have enhanced medical education, uh, and we're going to launch an AOS with both a Canary and a Zimmer booth. And of course, the patients will be screened to make sure they're candidates for this. I want to thank you very much for allowing me to participate in this meeting.